The season is on the line for the Omaha Heart and the Atlanta Steam as the winner advances to the playoffs while the loser's season comes to an end. Next! What time is it? Game time! is your moment. But you ain't no big bad bitch if we break your ribcage. Stop giving them free shit. Do your motherfucking job. Football night has arrived to the south, Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome inside the broadcast booth of LFL Football Night. Mitch Mortaza joining you from Atlanta, Georgia. Tonight you've got an Omaha Heart franchise that has not been this close to the playoffs since its inception back in 2012. They're going to face a playoff atmosphere versus the Atlanta Steam, and they could surprise some people tonight. With the Atlanta Steam, this feels like a bit of a trap game. They are coming in, not taking this Hart team very seriously, and that could spell disaster for a team that has seen many disappointing endings to its seasons. Now I welcome in my broadcast partner, Bobby Huco. Now, Bobby, how real is this Omaha Hart team? I am officially stamping my ticket and hopping on that bandwagon of the Omaha Hart. Who would have called this? The first game of the year, they open up against Seattle. They lose 70 to 6. You would think it's the old Omaha heart, but no, they came back. They smashed Nashville pretty good, and then they go up to Denver. Denver's a pretty good team despite their record, and they beat them. Now, for the Omaha heart team, all season, you've talked about two people on this roster, specifically quarterback Lauren Crouch and safety Anna Garza. How can't you like Lauren Crouch? She has that. She oozes that confidence coming out of everywhere. She got the swagger. She's leading that team winning football games. She has one of the top arms in the LFL. And who does she throw to? Anna Garza. Right now, having an MVP type season, both sides of the football. On defense, a ball hawk. On offense, the number one target for Crouch. Now, for the Atlanta team, Dane Robinson, we met with him earlier this week. It seems like he's looking at this Hart team through the lens of previous Hart teams and not taking them as seriously. How much would that concern you as an Atlanta Steam fan? Well, if I'm a fan, a coach, or a player for Atlanta, I'd be very concerned. This game right here for Omaha, they're not scared. They're playing with house money. Nobody thought they would be in a position to make the playoffs. If Atlanta comes here overconfident, it is a recipe for disaster. Now, Dane Robinson has been here six years. They have had epic collapses in the playoffs and toward the end of the season. This could be another one of them. In fact, our own Heidi Goldsnick, the third member of our broadcast team, sat down with the coach to talk about how you avoid another late season collapse. Thanks, guys. Dane Robinson has certainly had what most would consider a successful coaching resume in the LFL. Being named to all-star teams, having won two Eastern Conference championships, and even a pair of Legends Cup runs. However, the ghosts that follow him and this team have been those of late season collapses. I met with Coach Robinson to discuss the importance of tonight's win and a possible push into the playoffs, as well as their shot at a Legends Cup run. Coach Robinson, how would you summarize your six seasons coaching the Atlanta team? Would you say you've reached your goals? We clearly haven't reached our goals. Um, really, this has been a roller coaster of a ride coaching this team. Um, we've gotten to the big dance twice, uh, but also that means that we've been a second place loser twice. We have, we've knocked on the door. Right now, we need to like, break through it. And that's really what's important as we get into this season and this game particularly, to just complete the race, finish the dance, and ride off in the sunset as champions. Certainly, there's been plenty of criticism of you and your teams over the past couple seasons. The predominant criticism being they can't win the big game. How do you respond to those critics? 
I mean, those things are just at this point in time are just facts. Um, it just shows just inconsistency for us, you know, being able to really rise to the occasion. And really, at the end of the day, it does come to me as a coach. When we succeed, it's all about the players. When we don't reach those marks, I have to look at myself and our staff and how we uh, kind of failed in those avenues. But really, we continue to put the consistency together to make sure that when we do have those opportunities and we do shine, all the parts, we're one of the best teams, if not the best team in the league. This could be it for a couple of your key players. So how important is it to get that win tonight, extend your season into the playoffs, and possibly even a Legends Cup run? It's incredibly important. Um, seeing the fact that we missed out on playoffs for the first time in uh, my coaching tenure last season, uh, that's been the motivation. But you add in and you double down the fact that, you know, we never know where some of our players' uh, careers and lives may go. So that's why every home game is really important, especially when playoffs are on the line. We need to make sure we execute to extend their season, to have another shot for a third Legends Cup appearance and our first title. Dane Robinson may appear unfazed by some of the criticisms that's landed at his doorstep for his team's failures against prominent teams or in big games like tonight, but rest assured, Coach Robinson understands that his legacy, as well as the legacies of his franchise quarterback Dakota Hughes and Hall of Famers Dina Wajowski and Lauren Ziegler, could all ride on tonight's game. With a win, the Atlanta team will get one more chance to rewrite history and another opportunity at a Legends Cup run. Back to you guys. Dane Robinson and the Atlanta Steam definitely have a monkey on their back. For the Omaha Heart, can they continue their Cinderella season and shock the LFL world? The first half is next. Back to LFL football night in Atlanta, Georgia. Let's go down to the field to Heidi. Guys, I'm with one of the best two-way athletes in the LFL, Lauren Ziegler. Lauren, you were cleared to play in tonight's game, but are choosing not to suit up after recovering from a knee injury. Are you worried about leaving your team vulnerable to a much-improved Omaha heart? No, uh, I have all the utmost confidence in our team. You know, I think without me, I think they're just as good with me. And I mean, one person isn't going to make or break a team, and I'm fully confident that our team can do what it takes to push us to playoff to ensure that I'm 100% for playoffs. Thanks so much. Guys, hopefully Ziegler's confidence in our team's ability to clinch the playoffs is felt much more than our absence. Back to you guys for the start of the game. Wow, that is very surprising. One of the greatest players ever. She's cleared to play, but she's electing not to play. As I guess assuming her team is going to blow out Omaha. And this Atlanta offense wasting no time already to the line of scrimmage. There are the numbers on Dakota Hughes quietly having a great season with a 91 QBR. As we get underway here from the 15, toss right. That's Nicole Hulse cutting back in, making Michelle Marshall a five-yard carry as we meet Atlanta's offense. Dino Jowski, center. Julia Fizikai, your tight end. Aubrey Williams, tight end. Nina Francis, wide receiver. Michelle Marshall, wide receiver. Nicole Hulse, running back. Dakota Hughes, quarterback. With Lauren Ziegler out of the game, quarterback Hughes is now going to have to go up to Efezekai and Michelle Marshall. And that's the other running back, Nicole Hulse, named earlier as Rookie of the Year nominee, breaking off a 10-yard run and Atlanta first down. Hulse has been a really good addition to this Atlanta offense. The way she hits the hole, she is fast and furious from that running back position. Now a first and 10 at the Omaha 20. A pair of small backs in the backfield make them three backs now. Alfie Gore in the fullback set, toss left. They're gonna go back to Hulse. That's Taylor Britz on the tackle as we meet the defense. Courtney Outwater, defensive end. Lindsey Burst, defensive end. Jacqueline Good, your linebacker. Ana Garza, strong safety. Matei Vincent, strong safety. Taylor Britz, corner. Kayla Stennis, corner. It's going to be up to those linebackers, Jackie Good and Matei Vincent, to stop this strong Atlanta running game. That is Alfie Gore on a draw play. So we've seen three successive run plays with Alfie Gore, Michelle Marshall, and Nicole Holsa. So certainly some options for this Mark White-led offense. With Lauren Ziegler, their star receiver, out of the game, that's the game plan today. They think they can outpower Omaha this line. Omaha front line. Right now, Mark White, that's all he's doing. It's a wishbone set. He's power running right through Omaha. The same system here in place for six years with Mark White, the offensive coordinator, and Dakota Hughes as their quarterback. And 
this dropped by Jolie Ofezekai. I tell you what, if you look up the word inconsistent in the dictionary, there's probably a large picture of Jolie Ofezekai. No question, that ball is right on target by Hughes. You have to catch that ball. She has hands like feet a lot of the time, but then she makes spectacular catches and wins games like we've seen this year. It's unbelievable, and if you've talked to her, she knows that's part of the game that she has to rectify because you can't do that late into the season and potentially into the playoffs. Now a fourth and four. Ball at the Omaha 14-yard line. That's Hulse in motion. Quick screen and dropped. It looked like they may have been setting up a double pass. And now the two rookies getting after it. Nicole Hulse and Taylor Britza. You were saying that looked like possibly a lateral. It did look like it's going backwards. Her, her hand is not her feet. For her to throw another pass, that's got to be a backward pass. That should be a fumble. Nobody's going after the ball. You can see at the bottom of the screen some pushing and shoving after a lot on the line tonight. As we said it all through the pregame show, the winner of this game stamps their ticket to the playoffs, so everybody knows what's on the line here. What a stop by that Omaha defense. First series of the game, the powerful Atlanta offense gives it up after four downs. Six plays, 21 yards, yielded no points for Atlanta. So now Lauren Crouch, another Rookie of the Year nominee under center, wasting no time down the field. Pass intended for Taylor Britza and intercepted. That is Amber Clark, the all-fantasy corner, all over the pattern, an ill-advised pass by the rookie. Britza was actually open deep. The rookie quarterback waited too long. I already threw in that hit. Not the way Crouch wants to start the game. Britzer was open. The ball was thrown short. She gets hit right when she throws. I'm not sure she gets the power through, but the ball was short. Got picked off. Not a good start for the rookie. Crouch was complaining about being hit after the pass, but clearly Dina Wajowski, that was a legal hit on Crouch. So a quick turnover for this Omaha offense as Atlanta gets it back at its own 10-yard line. Hand off to Alfie Gore, a six-yard carry. Tackle by Lindsey Burse. Great blocking up front by Wojo. It's amazing how big Gore is, but she makes herself skinny to get through small holes and get six yards. So now a second and four. Atlanta seems to be very content about setting up the run game. As the pass game has struggled here, Jolia Fezikai dropping a third and four pass. And then the next play, Michelle Marshall dropping that screen. This time, Aubrey Williams, a wide handoff. A three-yard run. Williams was signed by the from the Austin Acoustic, I should say, and has really paid dividends for this Atlanta offense. Yeah, at 165 pounds, you give her the football on a wide under. That's the tight end on a misdirection. She's going to get you some yardage. Mark White loves her his power running set that he puts in. Dakota Hughes taking her time on a third and one. This Omaha defense coming up with that big stop on the previous series for this Atlanta offense. As we get close to the four minute mark of the first quarter. Alfie Gore in the backfield setting up the option pitch out to Gore. Great convergence there by Lindsey Burst. And again, fists are flying after the play. That's Jackie Good getting after Gore. We're going to see how that plays out. Gore clearly not happy. Appeared she was down, and Jackie Good took a shot at her. And Gore got up and started wailing on Jackie Good. Jackie Good getting a little bit greasy. They only needed one yard. They got the first down, but she takes some shots to the head into the wall. And then Good, a little bit extra, comes in. There's the shot on Good. I don't blame Good getting back up and getting greasy right back at her. You can't hit somebody in the face like that. Should have been a penalty on Atlanta. Yeah, that's unbelievable. We've seen that the last couple weeks. These officiating crews are not calling it as tight as they should. Alfie Gore should have maybe been tossed out of this game. Now a first and 10 ball at the Atlanta 21-yard line. Gore remains in it, running back. They're going to look to throw it again. Dakota Hughes overshooting her target. So the cardiac kid, Dakota Hughes, starting 0 for 3 here in the first quarter. 
She made a great look off with her eyes. She looked right, knowing she's going to come back to throw Marshall on a deep route. Marshall was open. It's rare when Dakota Hughes hey, overthrows a receiver by that much. I need you. I need you Marshall has some okay. deceptive speed. Another one of those Austin acoustic signings from this previous offseason. Second and 10, Dakota Hughes guiding Alfie Gore in the backfield. Here comes that Omaha rush. In fact, a blitz, a quarterback keeper. That's Dakota Hughes. Not really well known for her scrambling ability, but coming up with eight yards on that keeper. She got that eight yards all because of her fake. She faked like she's running the option inside. Lindsey Burst got sucked in. There's nobody outside. Hughes got eight yards. So now a third and two. That's offensive coordinator Mark White. A draw play. No, Hughes going to keep it herself again. Nice cut back to the outside. She got to shoot back to high school sports. Hey. What the fuck? Hughes needed two yards, picking up three. That'll be an Atlanta first down. Amazing run here by the quarter. Boom, she plants. Breaks ankles right there on number three, Jackie Good. She gets the first down. She's not bad, but very deceptive. So a first and 10 as this Atlanta offense is on the move again. A seven play drive down to the Omaha 18 yard line. They're gonna go to Gore. And that's Courtney Atwater shooting up the gap. A no gain tackle on Gore. Omaha defensive coordinator, Kale Good told me that's the game plan tonight to stack up the A-gap, stop core, and they have to pass the ball. And without Ziegler in there, they don't think that Atlanta can throw the ball as well as they usually do. Well, they certainly haven't to this point, as Dakota Hughes is yet to complete a pass. A Fezikai, who's been the target, has had a drop, and she overthrew Michelle Marshall on what could have been a touchdown. A second and 10 from the Omaha 18 from the shotgun. It's a delayed draw to Gore. And Gore getting smacked against the wall by Shaquilla Stennis. And Gore really takes exception to almost every tackle. She's getting hit hard tonight. Dina Wajowski, what a kick out block. She's already, it's the first quarter, but she's having a great game blocking on Omaha. And get another look at this. Alfie Gore trying to stretch it to the outside. A good seal block by Wajowski and right at the end, that's Shaquayla Stennis, the hard-hitting corner, coming up and laying the wood on Alfie Gore. And that's, hold on a second, that is Ana Garza. Very slow to get up, now getting on her feet. That would be a huge loss if Garza went out of this competition on both sides of the football. Not only a wide receiver on offense, on defense, one of the best in the LFL. Looks like Garza's gonna stay in the game. She's a really gutsy defender. We featured her a couple weeks ago. She always plays well beyond her size, and she's not coming out of a game that determines who goes to the playoffs. Absolutely, she's become a big leader on this defense. As Dakota Hughes in this Atlanta offense goes back to work, release, caught! Jolie of Fezikai, that's pretty much par for the course. Drop one, catch the next one. How about you catch both? It seems like when you throw the ball high to her, she has an easier time catching the football than when you throw it right in her gut. Great catch by a Fezikai, great fake by Dakota Hughes. Big play for Atlanta. We're gonna wind down here the first quarter. A first and goal after that 11 yard reception by a Fezikai. They're gonna go right up the gut of that Omaha defense. Alfie Gore, the power back, a three yard carry. As the first quarter comes to an end, Atlanta's knocking on the door, courtesy of Alfie Gore, Nicole Hulse, in this Atlanta run game. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Back to LFL football night at the start of the second quarter in a scoreless game. Also a game that will determine who advances to the playoffs, the Atlanta Steam or the Omaha Heart. A second and goal toss left. Nicole Hulse.
touchdown Atlanta. What blocking by that front line led by Wojo. Nicole Ho, she's not tall. Whoa, where'd she go? I don't, that was not a smart move. But the blocking for Atlanta for Hulse was incredible. Gore took Britsa out of the stadium. Hulse could walk in. Nicole Hulse factoring big in this Atlanta run scheme since the beginning of the year. And hence, she is a Rookie of the Year nominee. And you can see here, toss left. Great outside kick out block by Dina Wojowski, or make it a seal block. That really opened up the now hole for Holtz. Right. I'm telling you, I'm really impressed by this Atlanta front line. Wojowski, Efezekai, Aubrey Williams, they are blowing away Omaha. They don't even have to throw the football right now, but this running game totally sets up play action pass. And that is Michelle Marshall swinging it out. Will they give her the conversion? Yes. Atlanta extending their lead eight to nothing with an 11 play 40 yard drive that took 555. And the real story is there, Alfie Gore still remains down. Watch Gore number six, watch her leg get stuck in the turf right there. Oh my God, that is not good. I've had 70 operations. Let me tell you, when you get stuck in the turf like that, that's not good for your knee. We'll try to get an update on the Alfie Gore injury. Meanwhile, that's Rachel Blacklock. We sat down with her to talk about the youth movement on this roster. You're part of the youth movement here in Atlanta. As the team phases out some longtime starters, have players like you, Amber Clark, and Nicole Halls taken on more of a leadership role in the locker room? I definitely think we have, but I, being a rookie, I learned how to be a leader from my leaders. Um, before I played, and I, I've never played football before, nothing. So coming into here, I had idolized all of our leaders. So being able to play with them and you know learn from them, from them, it has been um, a blast, and I am excited to take over the Atlanta team once they you know fizzle out. Not good news for Atlanta right there. Gore, that she is out. She is not going to come back. She can't even put pressure on that leg. But getting back to Blacklock, she's a talented athlete from University of North Georgia. She's never played football, but she's played other sports. Dane Robinson, the head coach, has done a nice job bringing young players in for when the veterans leave and retire, they can replace them. So now a first and 10. Lauren Crouch going back to work. This is a reverse. Ana Garza, kind of hesitant to get to the outside, does manage a six-yard carry. Garza been a spark plug all season off the bench. She's great when she touches the football. Quick as a hiccup. They need to get her more touches now in this game because she is dangerous, can break any play with that speed. Great run. Second and four ball out to the Omaha 21-yard line. We've seen this offense click at times. They've had a rough start in the first quarter. Now being tested down eight to nothing. That's Garza in motion. Quick screen to the flat. Trot, Shalin Durham. We talked about Jolia Fezekai having problems catching the ball consistently. That's also been the case with Shalin Durham. Just a focus drop right there. You see Crouch's number. She's an impressive quarterback with her talent. The stats aren't that great. 12 out of 36. He's a good leader. So now a third and four, a possible passing down for Omaha. Not a lot of threats on the outside, as you saw with Shalin Durham and Ana Garza getting the start. High snap back to Crouch. Delayed handoff. That's Matei Vinson. And Vinson, an absolute load in the open field. A carry of eight yards, and that'll set up an Omaha first down. Dante Allen, the head coach for Omaha, told me that Vincent would be a big part of this game plan. For a big running back, great feet, a stiff arm over Michelle Marshall, then right, runs right through two more Atlanta defenders. Great run. So now a first and 10. Ball on the Atlanta side of the field, which Omaha has not been through the first half. This time a keeper, Lauren Crouch, into the second layer of the defense. Loves to call her own number so she can beat you with her arm and her legs. Let's meet this offense. Lauren J, your center. Chelsea Hoffman, tight end. Mama Sita, tight end. Schlender, wide receiver. Ana Arza, wide receiver. Matei Vincent, running back. Lauren Crouch, quarterback. No question this game's gonna come down to Crouch in her arms. She cannot turn the ball over tonight. 
That's a second and two handoff to Shalyn Durham. She needed two, she got three. Durham kind of the power back for this offense, has gotten some touches, but a really weak average, 3.9. She's not a bad running back inside the tackles. Doesn't have any blazing speed. That's why I was really surprised on that quick screen outside. They threw the ball to her as a wide receiver. So now a first and goal at the Atlanta 10-yard line as this Infinite Energy Center crowd comes to life. That's Ana Garza trying to get the edge against Jolie of Fezikai. Only a carry of about a yard. Garza in this Omaha offense will be tested against this defense. Let's meet him. Kino Ajowski, defensive end. Brittany Dimry, defensive end. Keon Harrison, middle linebacker. Michelle Marshall, the real free safety. AZ Johnson, strong safety. Amber Clark, corner. Dolly Fezikai, corner. I'm really anxious to see cornerback Amber Clark. This is Lauren Crouch calling her own number again and loses it. That is a loose ball. And they're going to call it Atlanta football at the one-yard line. Wow. So what this offense could not afford to do, they just did. Turning it over inside the red zone. Bad mistake by the rookie quarterback, especially inside the five-yard line. Great drive getting down there. You have to protect the football. Wajowski comes in and knocks it free. So you can see right there, she doesn't have it high and tight. Tries to get more yardage. Boom, they come in late and just pop it out. Bad play by the rookie. Wojcicki, a great play to get off the block of Courtney Atwater, and she just chased down Lauren Crouch and dislodged the football. Two crucial turnovers by Crouch early in the game. Her first pass got picked off. Here, going into the end zone, she doesn't hold it high and tight or put two hands on it, and Wojcicki comes in and strips it out. So a golden opportunity lost for the Omaha offense, and Atlanta will take over on downs. Back to LFL football night. Let's go and listen in on that Omaha sideline. We'll get our chuck again, don't worry. All right, it happened. It's over. All right? You keep thinking about it, it's going to keep staying in your head. Let it go, okay? You good, you good. They line up with the full backfield. That's like we talked about, all right? Taylor, they line up with the full backfield. That's like we talked about on that fire. All right. That's our chance. That's a touchdown. I need that. Coach Dante Allen is right on there. The young quarterback is still upset about that fumble. She's got to forget about it. She's the leader of this team on offense. Forget about the fumble. Go out there and get him next time. The Atlanta offense backed up inside its own one yard line. Marshall and Hulse in the backfield. Hulse getting the rock. And a good surge up the middle, all the way out to about the five yard line. That'll set up a second and seven. Great block again by center Wojcicki. When you have the ball on the two yard line, all you want to get is some breathing room. They give the ball to Holes right up the A gap. They get it out to the five. This Atlanta offense really hasn't done anything through the air. It's been all on the ground with Nicole Holson, and Michelle Marshall, especially with Lauren Ziegler missing from the lineup. This is a toss left. Nicole Hall still on her feet. And only five feet tall, very tough for the defense to track down. I like that call by Mark White. They have her outside, it's a quick pitch. It's like a sweep, but they get the ball open space and she gets the ball down the field. Hulse right there, 121 yards, a 6.1 average. I'd give her the football all night long. Nicole Hulse has done a lot of damage at the red zone. Surprising to see she does not have any touchdowns yet. A third and one, she seems to be limping. An empty backfield from the shotgun. Quick screen, caught. Michelle Marshall. A nine yard reception out to about the 21 yard line. I like that call, it's a quick now screen. You get the ball quickly out to Marshall with two lead blockers. Hulse had a great block downfield on Brits to open that up. We've got our first flag of the night. Gregory Edwards and his crew, a veteran crew of the LFL, will get the call. Personal foul, face mask, number four defense for Omaha. 10-yard penalty, first down. 
They are killing themselves right now. Before the game, Dane Robinson and I spoke about who's going to win this game and how. He said, whoever does not turn the ball over and doesn't do many penalties will win the football game. Right now, Atlanta is winning that game. So now a first and 10 moved out to the 20 in a Fezekai. An 11 yard carry as Mamacita could not get down the six foot one tight end. They've run the wishbone right, wishbone left, sweep right, sweep left. They come back with a counter, the Y under to a Fezekai, and she breaks it for a big gainer. A first and goal at the Omaha nine yard line. So Atlanta getting it done on the ground with multiple weapons. A Fezekai just the latest. Go right. This time Hulse in the backfield. This Atlanta offense really milking the clock on this drive. That's an inside handoff. Aubrey Williams. Touchdown Atlanta. Two straight Y unders where they are totally fooling the defense of Omaha. Michelle Marshall with an outstanding block. Holding number four, Atlanta. 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. Michelle Marshall, not that great of a block, being called for a holding. So that will take the points off the board. That could come back to haunt him if they don't convert. Wow, she doesn't think it was a hold. I didn't either when I saw it. I thought it was a great stock block, but the referee was right there. They're bringing it back. That could be huge. Ball backed up to the 12 after that 10-yard holding call on Marshall. And that's Marshall in motion. Jet sweep. Finds an opening to the end zone. Touchdown, Michelle Marshall. And that is how you make up for a holding call. Speed kills, and they totally out quick to Omaha. Great call inside Jet Sweet. Again, watch Wajowski. She comes outside the center and totally destroys Anna Garza. The hole's wide open for Michelle Marshall. Marshall displaying that speed was the hero in Austin for two, three seasons before signing with Atlanta. And with the absence of Lauren Ziegler from the lineup tonight, she's really become their go-to threat on the offensive side of the ball. They're putting a clinic in tonight in the running game. Toss left, that's Hulse. A collision at the goal line with Shauna Wagner, Mama Sita. Mama Sita with a great one-on-one -on -one tackle. I thought Holtz was getting in. Boom, she got stopped. So that was a five-play, 48-yard drive. You guys want the goddamn pitch, and that's what you let happen. You got it? And fire. You got to get to the outside. That was piss poor. That is Kale Good, the defensive coordinator for Omaha. Hey, Clearly hey, not right, happy with the hey, effort of his right, defense. Ready, ready, not at all. Crouch has got to come up with something. I know she's a rookie, but she was fired up. I spoke with her about an hour. She was going to come out firing. Right now, she looks a little shell-shocked. First and 10. Here comes the reverse to Garza. Nobody fooled, especially Jolia Fezekai. A five-yard loss. They called a double reverse. The crazy part is the single reverse was wide open. They tried to get a little too tricky. The single reverse would have broke for a long gainer. That'll back them up now to their own 10 yard line. And I'm not sure they're gonna get this playoff as we approach the two minute mark. Two minute warning, two minute warning. Indeed, we're gonna take our two minute break. The Atlanta Steam have now opened up a 14 to nothing lead. Back to LFL football night. Before we get underway, let's go down to the field. Two minutes. Don't give them any momentum. You guys are we're ahead. This is what we practice. We're ahead of the sticks. All right? Keep momentum. I need three downs. We give it back to offense with about a minute and some change left. And whatnot. We'll use our tight end, or our timeouts, and then we go and score, go up by three. I say at least 21, 23, nothing. All right? Make sense? Get it done. Hey, don't go nowhere. Here we go. Earn it on me. Earn it on three. One, two, three. Dane Robinson with a lot of confidence in his defense. He thinks they can get out in three plays, get the ball back, and then score before halftime. That'll set up now a second and 15 after that five-yard loss by Anna Garza. Here comes the blitz. Well set up by Omaha, but passed behind the intended receiver, Shalyn Durham. Wow, if Crouch could have stayed poised in the pocket, 
and delivered the football to Durham. She had three blockers in front of her. Would have been a big gain for Omaha. So a third and 15, Omaha does have two timeouts remaining. Receivers flank to the left side of Crouch, a high snap into the end zone. Crouch gets rid of it. Nearly intercepted in midfield by Amber Clark. And now Crouch slow to get up. Wow, this might be a disaster for Omaha. A bad snap by Lauren J. Crouch tried to make a play happen, got totally crushed. That arm is not moving. Watch the hit she takes. Bad snap that sets up the whole bad play. Wow, that's the turf. That's a quarterback's nightmare. When a quarterback's shoulder crashes on the turf with a player on top, she is done. She will not come back from that, I'm telling you. Crouch in absolute agony down on the field, and we'll take an injury timeout. Get an injury update on Lauren Crouch back after this. Back to LFL football night, and that is the backup quarterback for the Omaha Heart, Anna Garza. We all saw Lauren Crouch get driven into the turf by Brittany Demery, and her return is highly doubtful at this point. I've seen so many quarterbacks get hit like that. The only good news is it's not her throwing shoulder. But I saw two New York Jet quarterbacks on consecutive series have that same hit on them. It's tough to come back. I would really doubt to see her in the game. Now, Garza's not completely foreign to the quarterback position. Has taken some snaps prior. And that's not a look you want to see if you're a Hart fan. Crouch in tears, leaving the field. Crouch is a big-time competitor, I feel, for her. But Anna Garza, she did play quarterback in Austin. She's a fiery leader. She's going to have to play the game of her life from now on. On a fourth and 15, so coming into a tough position, you can see already miscommunication between Garza and the sideline. And Omaha is going to elect to take a timeout here. In all her dreams tonight, Garza probably had no desire or no thoughts that she would be playing quarterback because Crouch is a stud. We're going to take a timeout as well. Back for the final minute 50 after this. Back to LFL football night in a game that the Atlanta Steam lead 14 to nothing as Omaha has its backup quarterback in the game, Anna Garza, and facing a fourth and 15. Garza is now split wide to the left. She's not even playing quarterback. They're going to punt it here. Omaha, a nice punt by Shalyn Durham and taking an even better bounce. And down inside to about one yard line. What a heads up play by Karen Sloboda to get down and mark that down at about the one yard line. Great call by the coach, Dante Allen, just punting it away. Garza couldn't do it on fourth down. This punt is incredible. And Sloboda, watch her come out of nowhere to stop it from going in the end zone. Great roll right there. Atlanta should have caught the football. Michelle Marshall, but this roll, it pops up. She stops it from crossing the plane. What a play by Sloboda. Sloboda kind of gave up on that early, then saw she could track down the punt and downed it inside the three-yard line. A great job by Omaha by flipping the field. And a bad job by Michelle Marshall for not catching the punt. So now a first and 10 inside the three. Dakota from the shotgun, that's complete in the flat. Missed tackle, wide open space. A Fezekai, a 35 yard reception. That was about a 30 yard run after the catch. Real basic pattern from tight end. Watch a quick out, just one on one. Get it to her really quick and watch the athlete she is. I mentioned she goes right by Garza. Garza usually a short tackler, but the size differential. Fezekai is a monster compared to Garza. She took it all the way down the field. Wow. Fezekai had a rough start with that drop ball, but really has come on since then. At 6'1", 165, a clear mismatch with Garza. And to the end zone, caught! How about the concentration of Aubrey Williams? Hauling in a 12-yard touchdown pass. How about the velvet touch of Dakota Hughes? What a touch pass. You see Williams there again. They're going right at Garza. She's open. What concentration. Bobbles it four times. 
Garza is late coming over. What a pass by Dakota, though. Wow, another wow. You could see the reaction from Taylor Britza. It looked like it was her assignment, and she was expecting help over the top by Anna Garza. Both not able to get to the spot, and Aubrey Williams makes them pay for it. An ugly-looking toss to Hulse, but she gets in. Another conversion by the five-foot running back. That will extend Atlanta's lead to 22 to nothing. We knew it was just a matter of time until we saw Atlanta's explosive passing game. Only two plays it took them. The pass to Fezekai, then Williams, and then went the length of the field. That shows you by setting it up with a power run game, they can open up passing and throw it anywhere. And Atlanta's doing all this without Lauren Ziegler in a game that a lot of people expected to be far more competitive then 22 to zero at this point. It went from dreams to reality for Omaha when Crouch got hurt. Garza, who's their star wide receiver, has now got to play quarterback. So she's going to have to take command of this offense. First and 10, a minute 22. Omaha does have a timeout remaining. We'll see how aggressive they are with the play calling. Toss right to Matei Vinson, and Omaha not even trying to establish the pass game without Lauren Crouch. That looked like the old Omaha offense we've seen for years. What you doing? Yes, you working for Atlanta or for you, you for My bad, my bad. Omaha right now totally frustrated. They're taking it out on the referees. You got to play football, hey, Omaha. Spike coming on out. Remember, if they go empty, they go Marco. Expect heavy runs here. Expect heavy runs. Dane Robinson telling his defense to be on the lookout for the run in absence of Lauren Crouch in the pass game. Back after this. Back to LFL football night. Let's go down to the field for a listen in. You get an A for effort. I'm just saying, like. I, I, you get an A. I feel you. You get an A for effort. <laughs> Dane Robinson still talking up his defense, and that's not a look of contentment on Kale Good as his team has struggled both offensively and defensively. Dane Robinson, he knows that Anna Garza is not a thrower. She's a competitor, fiery competitor, but she does not have the arm that Lauren Crouch does. Second and eight from the pocket, rolling right, now cutting across. A lot of turf in front of her. A 12-yard carry. So if you can't beat them with your arm or you don't have an arm, why not with your legs? That'll set up a first and 10 and stop uh -oh. the clock. Get in here! Brittany! 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 Spike! Brittany, it's motherfucking Marco! Hey, it's Marco! There was nobody blitzing! Hey, it's Marco! Nobody blitz, it's Marco, God damn it! It's Marco. So now a first and 10. Garza going to throw it. An ugly looking pass. Caught by Vincent. A seven yard reception as the clock continues to run. Garza is a spicy athlete. I'm not sure he's a great quarterback. That was a shot put. Somehow got it there to Vincent. But they got to try to score some points. They got time. A se uh, second and three touches. here. Marco! Marco! Second and three, Garza, a delayed quarterback draw, breaking through arm tackles, trying to get outside, and does. Manages to stop the clock with 28 seconds, and Omaha preserving its timeout. They can change the momentum of this game with Anna Garza right now, doing it on the ground. We know she's exciting, but she's taking them down the field in the red zone right now. Watch her step up in the pocket. Smack in the fake by Wojo, throws her helmet off. She steps up and then just all in at Garza. What a run. Garza is a playmaker. We saw her do it in Austin. In fact, in the Legends Cup versus the Chicago Bliss and doing it once again here. Let's listen into that Atlanta sideline. What the actual fuck right now? Why is one person driving the field on us? Make the goddamn tackle, get up field. Communicate! It's Ben Marco! Minimize your motherfucking mistakes. If you give them this momentum, it will hurt us. They have 26 seconds. No timeouts. 
They're not. They're going to try to run the ball. Stop the line here, all right? Is there doing anything about saying? Everybody understand? Play with a fucking sense of urgency. Understood? I don't want any score. I'm not asking. We leave this half to the motherfucking goose egg. Come on. Meet the expectation now. Defense on me, defense on me. One, two, three. Anna Garza is a defensive coordinator's nightmare because she doesn't go by any scheme. You don't know what she's going to do. It's like playing street football. It's her against everybody, and she's beating the other team personally right now. Omaha set up well here. 26 seconds. They're out of timeouts, but they're going to have multiple shots at the end zone if Anna Garza can throw the ball, but they may elect to keep it on the ground here. First and goal, that looked like Atlanta jumped. This should be a free play. They're going to call it down, or at least they're going to kill it. That should have been a free play for Omaha. As Gregory Edwards and his crew talk it over, it looked like maybe Dina Wojcicki jumped from the bottom of the screen. This should move it closer to the goal line. Offside, number 26, Atlanta. Number 17, Atlanta. Half the distance to the goal. Please reset the game clock to 26.5. Please reset the game clock to 26.5. That is a total mistake by the referee. You're right. That should have been a free play for Garza. And the way she scrambles, who knows what would have happened. So they're going to go back up to 26 seconds on the clock. A first and goal from the Atlanta three. Rolling right is Garza to the end zone. That is intercepted. Jolie Afezekai who has come on like a monster here in the first half. Total miscommunication on the Omaha offense. Garza was trying to throw to number 18, Sloboda. The problem was Sloboda was blocking Efezekai and not even looking for the football. Garza threw it to Sloboda and goes right to Efezekai. I don't know who made the mistake, but it, watch number 18. She's not looking for the football. She's blocking down here. The feathers guy got a gift. And Garza should have just threw that out of bounds, threw it across her body into traffic, and a costly turnover for Omaha. And that's really been the headline throughout the first half. We saw Lauren Crouch, the rookie quarterback, with her first pass from scrimmage, throwing an interception, then driving the length of the field only to fumble it inside the three, and then there, Anna Garza with the interception. Here's some trickery. With 16 seconds, that's caught. Jolia Fezikai, a big target literally for this offense as Atlanta now calling its timeout with 12 timeout, seconds remaining. Atlanta, their second and final timeout of the first half. They're going to get another shot at the end zone. I like the call by Mark White. Sudden change, go for a big play. And we're going to take a media timeout. Back for the final 12 seconds after this. Back to LFL football night. Let's go down to the field to that Omaha sideline. Hey, watch the sweeps. Defense, hey, hey. Watch the sweep to the side. I don't know if that's the right defensive strategy by Kale Good. 12 seconds left. That will run the clock out. And you have Dakota Hughes, who's on fire right now. Shoot yeah, I don't think Atlanta's intention is going to be to sweep right or left. They're going to take shots at the end zone. 12 seconds remaining, dropping back deep. Gonna go to the end zone, caught! And I think we saw that from up here, partner. That was a push off. And you could see a Fezikai, she knows it. They're gonna call an offensive pass interference on a Fezikai. Pass interference, number 15, offense, Atlanta. 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. Wow, that was a blatant pass interference by a Fezikai. I'm not sure why she does it. She's the tallest player on the field. Jump up and catch it at its high point like that. You don't have to push off. So now 6.9 seconds remain as Atlanta's out of timeout. So the only thing they can do is go to the end zone. Anything caught underneath, the clock will run out. They have to go back to the same play, the jump ball when you have a feather guy. Let her go get it. 
Receivers flank to the left of Hughes. Steps up in the pocket to the end zone. Cut! Unbelievable placement by Dakota Hughes. Touchdown, Atlanta. The cardiac kids are back. What a throw by Hughes. What a catch by Michelle Marshall. But what is Garza doing to free safety? She's a receiver, did not even go after that ball. Watch number one, she's there to break it up or pick it off. Great throw to get it out there by Hughes. Great route to get behind coverage by Marshall. But look at number one, she's there, just go get it. A lot of confusion in the secondary for Omaha. We've seen that on both of the previous scores, including that Aubrey Williams touchdown. They've really got to get it together defensively and specifically in that secondary. Here's a two-point attack. Holes trying to cut in. An absolute wall of defenders. Watch your fucking hands. Don't be a sore loser. You're going home, baby. Hey, get in the locker room. Get in the locker room. Hey, squad, hey. Hey, hey, get in the locker room. We're good. We're good. We're good. And that'll We're take good. us into halftime. Atlanta leading it 28 to nothing. Let's go down to the field. Guys, I'm with Omaha Heart co-head coach Kale Good. Coach, what a heartbreaking end to what was such a promising season for rookie quarterback Lauren Crouch. How big of a blow is this to your team? It stings. I mean, I don't know what the, the just are yet of what exactly she did. So if she's out, then that's what backup quarterbacks are for. Anna's going to step in there. She'll be fine. She knows the offense. So it stings because he kind of had a one-two threat with Anna and Lauren. So we'll just have to pick up another receiver somewhere else. All right. Thanks so much, coach. Guys, they're going to go with Ana Garza the rest of the way and all their confidence lies in her. Back to you guys. I can smell some fear in Omaha right now. Down 28. The heart, a disappointing half of football trail at 28 to nothing. Back with halftime festivities after this. Please, ladies, let's go. We are fucking better than that. Please. This is not our last game! Fight! Fight with points! Please, I need everybody! You start to feel the will of this team. Once again, it was fragile and it just snapped. There, all right? We never want to wish injury on anybody. It's unfortunate what happened to the QB, all right? All right, say la vie, that's football. Welcome back to LFL Football Night here at halftime. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco taking you once again inside of both teams' locker rooms. You heard it there. Ana Garza pleading with her team to crawl back into this game as they trail it 28 to nothing at halftime to the Atlanta Steam. And if you just saw the box score, didn't really watch the game, you would have thought that Omaha would have been dominated in this game. But they weren't. It really kind of came down to three turnovers in the first half. No, absolutely. But Omaha did not have that same tenacity and focus, which got them to this point of the season, one game away from the playoff. You're right, it was the turnovers. The first pass of the game for Lauren Crouch, after they stopped Atlanta, she threw, tried to throw a bomb, got picked off by Clark. What happens again? They get the ball back. She takes it down to the one-yard line, gets stripped by Wojo, two turnovers already. And then Anna Garza comes in at quarterback. She's down by the end zone, too. She throws a pick to a Fezekai. Three huge turnovers in the first half. Yeah, that factored big time for him, especially Lauren Crouch committing those two turnovers. Very un Lauren Crouch-like. She's not done that all season for Omaha, and that's been part of the success for this team. Now for the Atlanta Steam. Let's give them a little bit of credit. We talked about them possibly having a collapse in this game. That has not been the case in the first half, especially offensively. They've kept it really balanced with Nicole Hulse on the ground and a pair of touchdown passes by Dakota Hughes. No, you're right. I really got to hand it to offensive coordinator Mark White. He has his team on point. They're balanced, throwing and running the football. In fact, Afezakai, she already has three catches for 68 yards. And the other wide receiver, Michelle Marshall, having a really big first half. Well, Michelle Marshall scored twice in the first half of this game as we look at our scoring plays. In the first quarter, it was silence. Both offenses squandered opportunities. All the scoring would come into the second quarter. In fact, just five seconds into it, Nicole Hulse with a one-yard touchdown run. Then with the two-point conversion, Atlanta would take an eight-to-nothing lead. The steam offense was not done churning out yards and points. On the ground, this is Michelle Marshall with a 12-yard run. Then through the air, it was the cardiac kid, Dakota Hughes, with a pair of touchdown passes. 
This one, a 12-yard connection to Aubrey Williams. Then, as time would elapse in the first half, Marsha, 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 Michelle Marshall hauls in this 28-yard touchdown. That brings us to our halftime score of 28 to nothing as we look at our stats. I'm going back to the Omaha turnovers. One fumble and two interceptions. Otherwise, this score will be very different. Atlanta's offense has really moved the ball well, accruing nearly 200 yards to only 58 yards of offense by Omaha. Without Lauren Crouch in the lineup, I just don't know how Omaha overcomes this 28-point Atlanta lead. With a win, Atlanta clinches the number three seed in the playoffs. Can they hold on? Here we go. The second half is next. Back to LFL football night. A game that everyone thought would be a little bit closer. The Atlanta Steam lead it, a commanding lead that is, 28 to nothing. Anna Garza is a veteran. She's a veteran quarterback, too. I mean, it's a nightmare to lose Crouch, but you have to try to win the second half and chip away at this 28 points. If you get it down to 28-14 by the fourth quarter, you got a shot. That's the only offense they've had all night. Matei Vincent and the run game. A nice 11-yard draw to Vincent. Dante Allen's got to keep that game going, the running game. You got Vincent, who can take chunks out. You got Garza, who's exciting, do play action passes. And like I said, chip away at that lead. This Ready, Omaha right. team is riding a two-game win streak, but that's with their starting quarterback, Lauren Crouch, who's been knocked out of this game. So their storybook season very much so on the line here in Atlanta. That's Anna Garza being chased down by Brittany Demery. In fact, Demery was the one who knocked out Crouch in the first half. Brittany Demery is simply a beast off the edge. Watch this rush. She comes after Garza, and Garza can move. Demery used to be a running back. Remember, she would run over people. Simply a beast. She's known to eat sushi in front of her own fish. Second and 14, chasing down Garza for a four-yard loss. And this Omaha offense has got to get some points in a hurry. Trailing this one 28 to nothing. And about 18 and a half minutes of football remain. In fact, we've got a timeout now down on the field. Timeout, Omaha. Their first timeout of the second half. With a backup quarterback, all kinds of communication Man, errors. fucking tackle. God damn it. All right. That being said, great job once again there. Same thing. She's putting hands. Get off. Just get off. Just get on the edge. Don't try to. Don't body up with her. Same thing I tell these mofos all the time. As far as outside edge rushing, that's what you got to do. All right. Don't let her get tangled on up. Stay outside. Despite a 28 to nothing lead, Dane Robinson keeps up the intensity on the sideline. Back with third quarter action after this. Back to LFL football night in Atlanta, Georgia. Mitch Mortaza, Bobby Huco, and Heidi Golznik providing sideline coverage. From the shotgun, rolling right is Anna Garza, trying to evade the rush. And there's that speed by that Atlanta defense. Demery and Michelle Marshall tracking down Garza. Wow, that hurt up here. Demery again delivers a big shot on Garza, throwing her almost through the wall. That is incredible. Anna Garza right now has got to be thinking playing quarterback isn't what I read about it in the brochure. Wow, two huge hits. So a third and 13. That was a one yard loss by Garza on the previous play. That's fumbled. Could this be yet another turnover by this Omaha offense? Indeed, that is Demery. Vincent had a really tough time fielding that toss play and had no shot at the recovery. Brittany Demery is just wreaking havoc on this Omaha offense. Three consecutive plays. I don't know what Vincent was doing there. Just catch the football. You got to help out your quarterback. But Demery was cat quick jumping on that free football. And Vincent made very little effort to get after that football. Perhaps this Omaha team, at least mentally, has checked out of this game at 28 to nothing. They do look deflated. The quarterback, I saw it at halftime when she was playing defensive back. When she didn't go after that long pass, something happened when they lost Crouch. They got deflated. So a first and 10 Atlanta with really good field position. 
on the Omaha side of the field. Toss left with lead blockers. That is Nicole Hulse, a 10-yard carry. What a block up front on Taylor Britza. Britza gets smashed. Watch the lead blockers out here. That's an insane block. She gets roached. That's when you go on your back like a cockroach. What a block. A 10-yard carry. Yeah, this Wait. offense is cranking on Three, all five, cylinders five, right five, now. They don't really need the pass play. They've had it at times with Michelle Marshall prior to the half and connecting with Aubrey Williams, but it's been the run game for Atlanta, and they're going to give it to the fullback, Aubrey Williams, using that strength. Matei Vincent on the tackle alongside Anna Garza. I'm telling you, right now, Atlanta's playing mistake-free football and just dominating the game. Dane Robinson said, we got to watch our turnovers. I don't think they have any so far. No, they played a really clean game as here, opposed to here. Omaha. Four turnovers on the game. Left. When you're outmatched like this from a talent you level, you, gotta, you, you could ill afford to give up four turnovers to an Atlanta steam right. team. Right. That Stand offensive still. front led by Wojo, I'm having fun watching all night long. They're just blowing people away. Here's a wide handoff. Keon Harrison to the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Another Y under. Everybody's getting into the action. That's what I love about this game plan tonight. Mark White's giving the football to everybody, and they're all moving. They're all moving like a team. Everybody blocking, everybody lead blocking. She makes a move right there, gets around Taylor. Wow, what a run. Yeah, Brits has had a really tough series on the outside at corner, and now they're just running to her side. They've clearly seen some kind of weakness in her tackling ability. Atlanta's got the mojo now. They are moving the football. Ball at the three. They'll go to two. Back to Brits's side and again. And we've got a new face in the game. That's Key Tips. But same formula and same results for this Atlanta offense as they stretch their lead now to 36 to nothing. Dane Robinson told me about this young player here. You talked about players stepping up like Blacklock. Watch Tibbs. She is explosive. She can run. She's going to be a star in this game some year. I don't know about this year, but she can play football. And speaking to Mark White, the offensive coordinator for Atlanta earlier in the day, he said hey, Key Tibbs, an absolute Let's speed go. monster, has had a tough time Let's getting go. the offense Let's down. Let's Obviously, go. hopefully that Let's develops Let's as she develops go. as a football player. But boy, that speed is pure lightning. I can't even imagine its backfield when you add Tibbs to what they already have. Omaha back on offense. Another handoff to Vincent. And this Atlanta defense is starting to key in on that run, knowing that Anna Garza cannot beat them with her arm. That was a read option play. I'm not sure why Garza gave the ball off. If she would have pulled it, she had the outside right there. That was a boring run, went nowhere. So now we're approaching the five-minute mark. If Omaha is going to build any momentum whatsoever, they've got to show some results on this drive. they got to try passing the football, too. Garza can throw, not a gun, but she can throw the football. Second and 12. This is a reverse. Shalin Durham limited to two yards. This offense has become very predictable, and there's no blocking up front. We talked about this weeks ago with Omaha. Why do you put Shalyn Dorham with an outside sweep? She doesn't have the sweep speed to get to the edge. Yeah, this offense, just the entire team looks deflated. They are not playing with the passion and intensity we saw them line up with when they played Denver and beat Denver handily, as well as beating the Nashville Knights. A third and 10 at the Omaha 15, dropping back to pass finally and well overshot for the intended target. The slowest player out on the field, Shalyn Durham, on a go pattern. Why not throw it to people that can run down the field? Here we go again. That pass wasn't even close, number one, because Garz is probably not even used to, used to throwing the football to Shalyn Durham. Yeah, this is a complete debacle on offense, defense, as well as coaching for Omaha. When you consider this is the biggest game in franchise history, to come in with a poor game plan with no intensity just boggles the mind. You gotta be ready for next woman up. You don't want your quarterback to get hurt, but you have to be prepared with your team ready to go. And here's yet another timeout by Omaha. 
As confusion out, continues Omaha. to reign. Their second timeout of the second half. Their final timeout of the second half. And that'll be their final timeout. We'll also take a media break here from Atlanta, Georgia in an absolute massacre. The Atlanta Steam leading it 36 to nothing. Back to LFL football night here in Atlanta, Georgia. Mitch Mortaza, Bobby Huco, and Heidi Golznick down on the sideline. 4.15 remaining here in the third quarter on a fourth and 10 from the pocket. Garza nearly completing that one. Pass intended for center Lauren Jay as this Omaha offense will turn it over on downs. Good timing on that pass, just a bad pass though. She threw it behind Jay. If she would have led her into the sideline, that would have been a first down for Omaha. I mean, just look, look how flat that sideline is for Omaha. There is no expression. It's almost as if they've been hit by a Mack truck. And we're gonna take another media timeout. Back after this. Back to LFL football night, a beautiful night in downtown Atlanta, Georgia. And that's a familiar face to a lot of LFL fans, certainly Atlanta Steam fans. That's Adrian Purnell, who recently retired and is really enjoying every second of this 36 to nothing lead. She should enjoy it, one of the greatest players ever. I love watching her play over her career with Atlanta and Tampa. It's good to see her out tonight. Still young enough to make a return for this Atlanta team, right, though. Let's go. An opportunity let's go. Fire, fire. to advance to the playoffs with a win tonight. They could match up as the third seed against either the Seattle Mist or the Austin Acoustic. They're playing good football at the right time of the year. We saw them early in the year get beat by Los Angeles, getting picked off, playing bad football. It's good to be going to, into the playoffs when you're on a roll. And now I'm getting word from our trusty producer. The matchup would be against the Seattle Mist, who are currently penciled in as the number two seed. A win here for Atlanta would put him in as the three seed. That pass incomplete and broken up by Shakela Stennis. One of the few things this offense has done wrong. Dakota Hughes trying to hit the speedster from Miami Beach. Christina Mattis, good to get her playing some playing time before the playoffs. So 3.48 in the third quarter. This offense at this point, if they score, this should be the final nail in the coffin, despite a lot of time remaining for the Omaha Heart. When Crouch went down, that was the final nail in the coffin. A second and 10 completion. Dina Wojowski. Touchdown Atlanta. Just rubbing salt in the wound of Omaha at this point. Throwing the quarter pattern to Wojowski, the center, perfect throw. And then she destroys again Anna Garza. First she gets destroyed by Demery twice. Now Wojo lays her out. Wow, listen to this hit. <laughs> Wojo destroying Garza again. That's three humongous hits on Garza. She is going to need a petting dog after this game. Wow. This Omaha defense has been absolutely manhandled by that front line of the Atlanta offense. Now the two-point attempt, toss left. That's Tibbs again. Nobody even touches Tibbs. So that'll be a two-point conversion. Atlanta with an unbelievable 44 to Get nothing lead. Of it. You're on the outside. Kale Good not happy with Jacqueline Good for giving up the outside. Nobody All even defense, laid a hand on left. Tibbs. All defense, I didn't even know what to do. You could see confusion. We thought it was just on the offensive side of the ball, but defensively, Anna Garza saying, I don't know what to do. Nobody's communicating out here. And certainly nobody's attacking the ball defensively for Omaha. It's amazing what Lauren Crouch, that quarterback right there means to this team. Without her, they are so disheveled right now, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it appears that everybody's given up. And these toss right, toss left plays is the old Omaha when they were just simply trying to get out of football games instead of attacking. They always attack with Lauren Crouch. They have a completely different identity with Crouch than they have right now. 
and Garza can throw it. I would do play action. The way she can run the football, give her a pass option, they're going back to the basics right. when they were no right. good. Ball Just giving ready. the ball handoff right, right handoff right. left. Ready. So now a second and nine. That was only a one-yard carry by Vinson. As we approach the two-minute mark of the third quarter, from the shotgun, rolling right, wide open in the flat and caught. Getting slammed down to the ground was Taylor Brissa by Amber Clark. Anna Garza looked like a quarterback. She looked deep. That was covered, came underneath, got the ball to Taylor Brissa. What a play for them. Keep moving now. And while Omaha more than likely will not be advancing to the playoffs this year, they have some young pieces to build around. That young lady being one of them, Taylor Britza. You saw her numbers on the outside, a vertical threat, certainly with Lauren Crouch in the game at quarterback. So this is certainly not the end for Omaha. I would make the argument that there is optimism in the future for this team. There has to be. Britz is a great receiver. You mentioned it. First play, oh, not a good pass by Garz at all. Throwing right into coverage, trying to hit Brixa, who wasn't open. Just a bad read. Yeah, now they're forcing things. Is this Omaha offense, Keon Harrison, stepping in front of that pass, taking the championship belt from Dane Robinson. It's just fun to play for the Atlanta Steam right now. There's just nothing here. She has all kinds of time, little gun shy. Threw it right into double coverage. She's a quarterback, you can't do that. Yeah, Anna Garza, as I said, certainly forcing the issue now. That look right there on Courtney Atwater summarizes everything for the night for Omaha. As Atlanta once again takes over inside the 15, great field position again. This is Key Tibbs toting the rock on that left side. They keep working Brits' side and continue to have success. Key Tibbs, she reminds me of a young Dominique Malloy who was at that time the fastest player in the LFL. Watch out for Tibbs, I'm telling you, she's gonna be starting somewhere if it's not here. And that's one of the benefits when you're leading 44 to nothing. You can open up the bench and from time to time you find a gem like Key Tibbs. There's a lot of talent at Atlanta backfield. I'd watch out. They got Holtz now. They got Tibbs. They got Michelle Marshall on top of their power back. Wow, what a backfield. And keep in mind, Lauren Ziegler will be back in time for the playoffs. That's Tibbs. A poorly set up option by Dakota Hughes. That'll be a loss of four yards. Back him up to about the five-yard line. Great play by Mate Vincent. They forced it out. They strung out that option play. There was nowhere for the quarterback. Dakota Hughes to run, or also Tibbs. Good play for Omaha. Now keep an eye on that. That was Hughes limping a bit. She's had a lot of ankle issues over the past couple seasons. Seems to be walking fine with it now with 16 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Dropping back to pass wide open. And dropped. Aubrey Williams scoring on a similar pattern in the second quarter. Can't haul this one in. Williams runs great routes, but let's just say she's not a Lauren Ziegler. In fact, with that catch, she's more like the old Avezakai. This Atlanta offense, despite that Williams drop, has taken firm control of this game. And we come to the end of three quarters of play. Back for the final 10 minutes from Atlanta, Georgia, after this. 10 minutes. Put it all out on the line. You have no choice but to make it happen. The fourth quarter starts now. Here we go, the final 10 minutes from Atlanta, Georgia, in a game where the hometown steam have a commanding 44 to nothing lead. And at this point, 10 minutes away from their ticket to Ontario, California, and the LFL playoffs. Knowing that the three veterans that retired last year came back for one reason, to win a championship, how long do you keep your quarterback, Dakota Hughes, in the game? That's an excellent call, especially with the injuries like Lauren Ziegler. But at the same token, you want to look sharp going in. And at this point, as I said, they're going to match up with the Seattle Mist. Even without Allie Alberts, that is a tough defense. Let's not forget Jade Randall, 
is perhaps the defensive player of the year. The way she's dominated, this offense has got to be clicking when it heads to Ontario. No, you're right, especially the passing game because Seattle is not going to let them run like Omaha did tonight. So now a fourth and goal, Tibbs in the backfield. Toss right to Tibbs and chase down. One of the few times Tibbs has been chased down with that speed by Jackie Good as the Omaha defense holds and they will take over on downs. That is the first play the entire second half that the Omaha Heart play with a lot of heart. While the Atlanta Steam are 9-16 away from a big party in Atlanta, Georgia. Back to LFL football night in a 44 to nothing game. You gotta have more entertainment. And you know what, pregame, that's your boy on the right side. That's Dean Robinson, half my age, in the Stairs Challenge 2019. Look at him go, what a stud. At 45 years old, I beat Dane Robinson up and down the stairs of this arena. That's amazing. Dane is a former pro athlete, and you absolutely smoked him. Congratulations. Hey, for a good cause as well, LRJ Foundation, an Atlanta-based nonprofit whose mission is to bring suicide prevention and mental health awareness to schools. So a great cause and fun with Dane Robinson. Again, half my age, and I beat him on stairs challenge. That was a huge upset. I actually bet on Dane. I didn't know you are such a good runner. You know, it's all in the cut of the shorts. The higher the shorts, the faster the speed. And I got my shorts pretty high now. Well, Dane obviously <laughs> doesn't have the speed that he used to have either. Our producer always jokes about the size of my shorts. They go higher and higher. And when I'm up against the 25-year-old in Stairs Challenge, rest assured, I'm wearing Speedos. I don't know what that means. You're wearing Speedos running around? <laughs> We're getting completely derailed here, folks. First and 10, Matei Vinson. That's a five-yard carry. Getting back to the foundation, lrjfoundation.com. That is where you go to donate. A great cause for an Atlanta-based nonprofit who really gives back to the school communities here, especially in the light of bullying and everything going on in our schools. It's great to see foundations like this making a difference. No, that was a fun run to watch, but you're right. For that foundation, it's an excellent call. After completion of the play, and we've got a flag down on the field. Number eight, Atlanta. Ten-yard penalty, first down. That's an unsportsmanlike. That looks like it's Samantha Isla, so that'll advance the football. Despite the score, it would be nice for Omaha to get into the end zone to have something to feel good about getting out of this game. And for Anna Garza, as a quarterback, I mean, this happens in football. Your starter goes down. You can't just not play anymore. The entire team went down, but they got a little spark right now. I like this. First and 10 from the Atlanta 20 into the flat caught. That, that appears to be complete to Karen Sloboda. An 11-yard reception down to the Atlanta 9-yard line. Dante Allen, the head coach and offensive coordinator. Now he adapted, he adjusted to Anna Garza's passing game. Short underneath passes, you mix in the runs, they're moving the football. And you know they did this in the first half a bit as well, but they would just implode inside the red zone. Let's see if they can finally cash this check. And then once in a while you mix it in with Garza and her scrambling ability, she could run with moves like a top running back. First and goal, I'm not sure what that was. A lot of confusion in the backfield. It looked like a Y under handoff setup to Mama Sita that went nowhere. Yeah, there was a lot of confusion and a lot of non-blocking for Mama Sita. She got the football and was hit immediately. There's Dane Robinson and his young protege. He's really built out a great assistant staff, and that's really taken this team to the playoffs now five years in a row. But you know what comes now? Here we go, Atlanta in the playoffs. When are they gonna win the big one? Second and goal at the 11. A deep drop for Garza. Gonna keep it herself again. Trying to get to the outside. Cannot get past the sure tackler, Amber Clark. See, that's Andy Garza right there. She's playing with a lot more confidence. She saw the whole band, went to it, made a couple moves. Big game for Omaha. Now a third and goal at the Atlanta five yard line. 6.40 remains in the game. Omaha's out of timeouts, obviously out of this game at 44 to nothing. But again, get a score here and build some momentum going into the offseason. We saw it, their previous two wins. There's a lot of talent on this team. Crouch will be back, Burrs will be back playing wide out. 
And they're an exciting team to watch. Third and goal, rolling left. Buying time with their feet, directing traffic. Garza throwing across her body and caught. Finally, touchdown Omaha. And it's Taylor Britza. Anna Garza looked like an all-fantasy quarterback on this scramble. Look at her speed and cutting ability. She keeps her eyes downfield. She does a Salerno-type throw back across her body. Keeps it outside shoulder. Perfect pass. Brista, catch, touchdown, Omaha. And you know Dane Robinson wanted this shutout more than anything. You could see the look on his face. Yeah, he's not very happy at the effort of his defense. I'm not sure he's happy at his defense or losing that stair challenge to you. Yeah, I think that's more about the stairs challenge. That's still eating away at him. I'll be sure to remind him in the playoffs. Now the two-point attempt from the three-yard line. A full backfield for Omaha. Handoff to Sloboda. And Sloboda getting into the end zone. So just like that, Omaha gets on the board and finally has some life. Solid drive by Anna Garza, this entire offense. Every play clicked. They had desire to score. They moved it. You know what? This is great momentum for next season. A six-play, 47-yard drive that took three minutes and 33 seconds and another 25 seconds it took for me to beat Dane Robinson on the stairs challenge. Now that you won, won against the Eastern coach, can, are you gonna use this challenge for charity against Chris Michelson in Seattle? I like my chances against Michelson. I stepped up to the toughest guy in the league, the guy in most shape, Dane Robinson. From here, it's literally all downhill. After watching you run, I'm gonna go with you this time against Michelson. I like my chances against Michelson. Hunter Hudson, from Los Angeles, he may give me some problems. Rory Derry, I got him. First and 10. Option keeper. That's Dakota oh, Hughes oh, getting oh, tracked down by that, Courtney oh, Atwater. Oh, 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 Shut the fuck up. I don't have wow. X Men. We don't have X Men. We didn't see that coming. That is Dakota Hughes literally cursing what appeared to be at her offensive coordinator, Mark White. I don't know where that came from in a 44 to eight game. You don't want anything to break your momentum in the fourth quarter. I've never seen that ever with Dakota Hughes literally cursing at Mark White, the offensive coordinator. She sucks. Just let her suck and think she's good. It seemed to be like a heat of the moment thing for Dakota Hughes. She wasn't happy with the personnel in place for that particular play, but certainly a different way to express that to your offensive coordinator. Why don't blame her? As we mentioned, the last thing you want right now is Dakota Hughes getting hurt. So when you're doing option plays, you want your best talent in there. But more importantly, getting back to the stairs challenge. Just kidding, guys. Third and eight. That pass intended for Nina Francis as Dane Robinson and Mark White starting to open up that bench for Atlanta. Dakota Hughes, the quarterback, trying to hit Nina Francis, the free agent acquisition from Berlin, Germany. Dane Robinson went across the water during the offseason, brought her in. Good to see her getting some action. So now a fourth and eight for this Atlanta offense. If you're Omaha, get a stop here and double up. Get another scoring play or another scoring drive and really feel good about yourselves. Right, you make like it's the first quarter when they stopped them on the opening drive. Fourth and eight, dropping back to pass to Fezikai. And it looked like Fezikai and Sloboda got their feet caught under. That'll fall incomplete with 3.38 remaining as Omaha will take over on downs. That's their favorite play, play action. Fezikai releases, does a corner out. Dakota Hughes just overthrew it. I'd get both of them out of game right now. You don't want either one of those two getting nicked up. Well, here's the thing. If you're bringing in substitutions and opening up the bench, absolutely, because Dakota Hughes is not going to develop working with the backups at this point. So, yeah, I agree. Take her out of the game. I believe Michelle Marshall, in light of Lauren Ziegler not being there, is the backup quarterback. And that's what you do when you're not playing in the LFL. Chug off with fans. It's just a fun scene in Atlanta right now. When they say sports ultimate live experience, they mean it. 
That's Matei Vincent tackled in the open field. So Vincent has not gotten off in this game. She's had bursts of great yardage, but she's never really gotten off. A lot of the backup players in the game now may get some big hits out there because they want to play in the playoffs. Right now is their chance to show Mark White and Dane Robinson they want some action. Especially in light of injuries like that one, Nicole Hulse. It'll be interesting to see if she's going to recover in time for the playoffs. And then you're talking about Alfie Gore. Will she be back for the playoffs? Atlanta's going to limp into the playoffs much like Los Angeles. And something else factoring in to think about at this point in the season, there's a new rule in the LFL for playoff-bound teams. They can sign up to two free agents from teams that are not going to the playoffs. So I ask you, Bobby Huco, if you're Dane Robinson of the Atlanta Steam, who are you targeting around the league? Well, if I'm Dane Robinson, you just lost two of your backs. We don't know how serious Hulse is injured, but I know who's going to play a lot. You got right on your bench, Key Tibbs. I mean, she's a, she looks like she'll probably start in the playoffs. Now, if I'm Los Angeles, I would also look at the Atlanta bench and go after Adrian Purnell. Yeah, I don't think Adrian's going to sign with anybody but Atlanta if she plays. Another interesting thought as we go on a third and two here. That pass caught by Karen Sloboda, make it Lauren J. Down to about the one yard line. That should take us to the two minute warning. Another name to throw out there, Liz Kamak of the Denver Dream could be a great fit at running back for the Atlanta Steam in the playoffs. Absolutely right. K-Max a player. She'd be open for free agency too. And that is our two-minute warning here in Atlanta, Georgia. Back for the finality after this. Back to LFL football night. Next week, we wrap up the regular season in Music City. The Nashville Knights hosting the Austin Acoustic in another playoff scenario game. Interestingly enough, if Nashville wins, they advance to the playoffs. If they lose, L.A. it goes. Wow, a lot of playoff implications. Looking forward to that. Jolie Fez, a guy just named the MVP of the night. Three receptions, 68 yards, seven tackles, just all over the field. Yeah, and we got all over her after that opening drop early in this game. But since then, she has been all over the field, as you said, defensively and offensively. So a Fezekai, a great signing two years ago by this Atlanta Steam team, and it's paying off for him now. Yes, a Fezekai, she came in, and then last year during the offseason worked super hard on her pass catching and had an outstanding season. That's Garza being pushed into the end zone by Matei Vincent, but we've got a flag. As we are at the two minute mark of the fourth quarter, despite the scoreboard, Ana Garza still competing. We'll see if they call this a hold possibly with, on Omaha. Certainly you can advance a runner and that's what Matei Vincent did. It'll be interesting to see what they call here. Nobody competes like Anna Garza. She wishes she had four more quarters to go after Atlanta. Middle. Unfortunately, she doesn't. She scored easily. Like, no one would have touched you. Just take the ball and go up the middle. Can you do that? Yes, sir. Just do it. If, if they don't call it, push There's it no right play in. Play. Oh, play. Oh, play. Play. Yeah, okay, you got two people pushing you. Yes. They call touchdown. So they're going to give him the touchdown and pick up the flag. 13 center pull. She's going to pull for you to follow her. Okay. That's Dante Allen urging his backup quarterback to simply follow her blocking for this extra point attempt. Yeah, there's going to be nothing fancy about this play. The center's going to pull. They're just going to try to find some daylight. So they're going to go for a two-point attempt here from the three-yard line in a 44-14 game. That's Matei Vincent, the sole running back. They're gonna go up the middle, as you said, and nobody there. Absolutely no blocking. And that's backups for the most part in the interior for this Atlanta defense. Dante Allen, the offensive coordinator, has to come up with a more creative play than that. When you have a quarterback like Garza, do a bootleg, put on the outside, not that play. They were all you over You could see her. just the look of defeat on the sideline for Omaha despite these two late scores. They've just never had that energy throughout this ball game. And I think you're right. When Lauren Crouch went out, 
it really deflated this team across the board. It changed everything. The game plan, the two players, Crouch is out, guards are now in at quarterback, not playing receiver where she's all fantasy this year. So Dakota Hughes remains in the game with under two minutes. Toss left, key tips with blockers. 15, 10, five. Touchdown Atlanta. And there's that speed we were talking about. For a backup running back, Key Tibbs is really making an impression tonight. Mitch, will you pass me another marshmallow? Because Key Tibbs is on fire here in the second half. She'll be the starter in the playoffs. Wow, she'll be playing on Sundays if she keeps running the football like this. Basic eye formation, takes the sweep, gets a couple key blocks, and then bam, she is gone. Lightning in a bottle. A great block by Aubrey Williams and Dina Wajowski springs Tibbs. And a little bit of fire in the step for Tibbs, making the most of her opportunity with the injury to Alfie Gore and Nicole Hulse. And again, Tibbs, nobody touches her as Atlanta extends its lead, at least for the moment, as we've got another flag down on the field. What a time for Tibbs to have her show out game. Holding, number two, Atlanta. 10-yard penalty, repeat the try. That's a holding call on the rookie, Christina Mattis. So several backups in the game right now. And to your point, why avoid, why possibly get an injury here to Dakota Hughes? 145 left, 50 to 14. Get her out of this game. You saw what happened to the running backs and from the quarterback from Omaha, they're gone. So you want your quarterback healthy, get her out, you're right. Especially with blitzes coming up the middle like this one from Omaha. And Dakota Hughes barely gets that into the stands. And here you go, you gotta fight. That's Courtney Atwater all over Hughes. And this is what you don't want from a playoff team. Are you? Are you? Oh, this is getting ugly. This might be the worst fight I've seen all year. That's Shauna Wagner and Jolia Fezekai squaring up. It's still going on. There's a throwing hand. If we get another look at this, it looked like Shauna Wagner threw Dakota Hughes to the ground, and that really started all of this. Threw her down and then started punching her and pushing her down. That's why Hughes should not be in the ball game. Let's get another look here. There you see at the top of the screen, Wagner just throwing Hughes down. And then to her defense, the entire Atlanta bench seems to clear, After led by play, Amber Clark. We have personal foul, number 19, Atlanta. Personal foul, number 10, Omaha. They both are ejected. So we've got a pair of players that are tossed from this game, including Amber Clark, who's the all-fantasy corner. Not that it's relevant in a 50 to 14 game. The players ejected are number 10, Atlanta, number 19, Omaha. So Shaquayla Stennis and Amber Clark. Some frustration setting in here from Omaha. And this, like I said, started with Mama Sita. That's kind of classless right there from Amber Clark and Lauren Ziegler. At this point, get off the field, get ready for the playoffs. Not a lot of class being shown by Atlanta or Omaha for that reason. Mama C to taking cheap shots at the quarterback to Cody Hughes started this whole thing. Amber Clark better watch out. Getting kicked out of the game right before the playoffs. The commissioner's office might get involved. Yeah, you gotta be careful here. Regardless, you don't wanna be throwing blows in a football game, but this close to the playoffs, that's a good way to get yourself kicked out of the first round of the playoffs. Atlanta's I'm just got to pack it in here I'm and get I'm ready fine. for the I'm Seattle fine. mist. Last time I saw a fight like this was at the end of the season in the NBA, and the commissioner's office looked at the tape. There was like five different fights going on here. Now a minute 45 remain as Omaha takes over on downs. And it appears we've got a new quarterback in position for Omaha. That's Lauren Jade, the center. 
lining up in a wildcat formation. No shot. And if you're not going to attempt to create anything, why not just take a knee and get out of here? I don't understand why Lauren Jay, the center, is in a wildcat position playing quarterback. We've never seen her throw the football. They're like drawing sticks at what they're doing on offense, just reaching for anything. Yeah, you got to be really disappointed overall at the effort of Kale Good and Dante Allen, specifically Dante Allen on the offensive side of the ball. This has been his poorly coached game that I've ever seen from Dante, and I've seen some doozies over the years. They came in, it looks like a completely different football game and football team. They came in with a chance to make the LFL playoffs, and look where we're at in the fourth quarter. Yeah, unbelievable. Nobody would have expected a 50-14 to game as well as Omaha has played, but I go back to what we talked about at halftime. It was really those three turnovers, two of them inside the red zone, that turned the tide in this game. Two inside the red zone, but the first pass of the game for Crouch, she had Briska open for a deep touchdown, and she's got one of the strongest arms in the league. Hypothetically, that's three scoring plays. The bomb, the two inside the red zone, that's 21 points in the first quarter. Yeah, that changes the look out of this game completely. Now a toss left to Matei Vincent. This should be the final play of this game. Kind of a mercy killing for this Omaha Heart, who now have got to lick their wounds and crawl into the offseason. Some interesting decisions. Certainly they expect Lauren Crouch back, the quarterback. Hopefully that's not too serious. And on a fourth and one, if that doesn't spell out everything, that's how the cars is spiking the ball on a fourth and right. one. Nine, nine, eight. Everybody's going to the end zone. Just throw it up. Okay? All tight ends. Nine, nine, what? Nine, nine, eight. Nine, nine, eight. Nine, nine, eight. Nine, nine, eight. Right. Nine, nine, eight. Just protect. And Dante Go. Allen is just as clueless. He doesn't. <laughs> no. That was a fourth down. That was a fourth and one. And Ana Garza telling Dante Allen that was a fourth down. I tell you what, this is the worst coaching I have ever seen from Dante Allen. When you're not even aware of the down and distance as a coach, that's that is a serious problem. Unbelievable that neither the quarterback or head coach knew it was fourth down when they downed the football. Yeah, ultimately there may be a, this may be an opportunity for a change in coaching in Omaha. We've said it for years, but I think until that change is made, this franchise is never gonna really cross over. They made a run with those two games, but right now in this second half, they look like the old Omaha heart. Dina, as it stands right now, you'll be facing the Seattle Mist in the playoffs. How do you think you'll match up against them? Um, it, it's going to be a good matchup. It, effectively, it's the, similar to our Legends Cup like two years ago. We know each other well. We're all, you know, a lot of us have been in the league a long time. So Michelson knows us. We got to know Michelson. We're going to have to out game him, out scheme him because the man comes prepared. Congratulations on securing your playoff position. Guys, we'll see the Atlanta team take on the Seattle Mist August 24th at the Citizens Bank Arena. Back to you guys. Wojo is fired up. You know she's going to have some Steel City beers. She's from Pittsburgh, but Atlanta looks strong. I'm not telling you what, this team has a shot to go places in the playoffs. They're healthy except for those two backs, but we found another back with Key Tibbs, who is exciting as anybody we've seen. That's Omaha's Shalyn Durham in tears. Alfie Gore in street clothes along with Lauren Crouch. A very physical game here in Atlanta, and that'll officially do it for us as the Atlanta Steam stamp their passport to Ontario, California. They will be the number three seed facing off against the Seattle Mist. And for the Omaha Heart, a lot of injuries and uncertainty with the coaching futures of Dante Allen and Cale Good. That'll do it for us here from Atlanta. For my partner, Bobby Huco, our sideline reporter, Heidi Goldsnick, Alex Saxon, the producer, and Austin Lake in the truck, this is Mitch Mortaza. We will see you next week from Nashville, Tennessee.